Good morning, everyone. Welcome to morning prayer this morning. Excuse me while I just readjust the camera there. Hope you're well this morning. Thank you for joining us. We begin with the opening words from the Church of England Daily Prayer Service for Passion Tide. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We're journeying with Jesus to the cross this holy week. I'll read for us today from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 12 to 25. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him. For they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, Forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. Amen. God's word to us today from the Gospel according to St Mark as we follow Jesus in his final week of ministry this Holy Week. In our Christianity Explored group that met online this week, we had some questions about this passage. Why does Jesus curse a fig tree? Why 
Is Jesus angry with the fig tree? Why is he angry with the fig tree for not bearing fruit when it wasn't the season for figs? Was Jesus just hangry? That's hungry and angry. Was he tetchy because he knew that he was going to suffer pain this week? Well, just to make us even more hungry this morning, these kind of stories in Mark's gospel are known sometimes as Markan sandwiches. I'll tell you what I mean. Mark tells one story of Jesus with another story sandwiched in the middle, with the outer story maybe teaching us something about the inner story. The outer story today is the cursing of the fig tree. Jesus curses the fig tree. They go back the next day. They see that it's withered. The middle section is Jesus cleansing the temple. Jesus had cursed the Jewish leaders on many occasions. He said that they were failing to lead the nation in worship of God. In fact, they were hypocrites, wielding their power over others. Jesus cleanses the temple in this reading today, but the temple was actually completely destroyed just 30 or 40 years after Jesus' time, and it's never been rebuilt. The centre of worship of God for God's people on earth would be completely destroyed. So in the second part of the story, the disciples point out to Jesus that the fig tree he had cursed had withered. Jesus answers them, if you have faith, then this mountain will be moved. If you have faith, then your prayers will be answered and your sins will be forgiven. In other words, nothing is impossible in the purposes of God. Even when something is cursed and withered, it can be reborn. It can be made alive again. Even though the temple had come to the end of its purposes in God's ways, God raised up a number of different temples for himself to live in. That can include me and it can include you if we invite God's Holy Spirit to come and live in our hearts today. Let's pray. Father God, help us to put to death in our lives anything that fails to bear fruit for you. Lord God, help us to know that you can bring new life in any situation. Lord God, as we prepare to celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus for us. Help us, Lord, to seek you, to live for you, to bear fruit for you in our lives each and every day. In your name, Father, we pray. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do join us if you can for our Easter Sunday worship, 10.30 here in St Anne's, 9.30 at St Mary's, 11 o'clock at St Winifred's on Easter Sunday. If you want to attend here at St Anne's, please get a free ticket on Eventbrite so we can ensure that we are socially distanced. We also have our Monday Thursday service our Holy Week Holy Communion at half past seven on Thursday. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.